I've been using Linux on my desktop for a number of years. And some of you may even cringe a little thinking about those early years of the Linux desktop when it was, well, clunky and not sophisticated and a lot of problems getting the XWord driver to work with your mouse and way too much time spent playing with serial mice. Yes, that's how long ago I started playing with Linux desktops when there were serial mice, not USB. Now Linux has become pretty simple. Grab a thumb drive, load your favorite distribution on there, and picking your favorite distribution can be confusing, but nonetheless, there's a lot more options out there. So there's so many options, and it just works on a majority of hardware out there. So it's not this big, I don't know what I'm gonna do and what it's going to work on. I wanna to talk today about Pop! OS 1910 uh, and some of the keyboard shortcuts and some of the usage of it. So I figured this might be some interesting topic for those going, I'm lost when I load it. I don't understand this weird interface because I've only come from the Windows world, which is granted a little bit different. And to me, it feels really clunky and slowly coming along to the way Linux has been doing things for a while, like with virtual desktops and things like that. A little bit of housekeeping, we would love you to check out the Affiliates We Love page. And this is over on our website, lawrencesystems.com. You can go to Affiliates We Love. We have a long list of companies, then maybe some of them interest you uh, for signing up with offer codes that we have here. And we even have, in case you're wondering whether it's a PayPal one, this is just to throw money at us. If you just go, you know, I just wanna throw a few dollars at you. We don't mind. Uh, this does help out the channel and I am trying to keep the channel is, uh, ad free as possible. So these are actually all affiliates, not actual direct channel sponsors. I don't have any of those at the moment. Uh, no one pays me to make videos, but uh, I get paid when people click on the links and it is helpful and keeps the channel going. And I'll bring up IT Pro TV real quick. They have amazing number of courses. Uh, we really like them. They're a tool we actually use and actually pretty much everything on here, well, I can't say pretty much all of these on here are companies we've actually worked with, used and use your products. With the exception of Netgate, who's not an affiliate, they're just someone we like and use their products. There's no, uh, checking it out just takes your website. But IT Pro TV, uh, they're a sponsor. They're someone we use with our staff and we do have a 30% offer code on them. I bring it up because IT training is important if you plan on being in the IT field. Uh, getting your knowledge on is important. And once you're in the IT field, if you wanna stay relevant, you have to stay educated. Um, I'm trying to help educate people through some of these videos, but I can't teach you everything. And the people at IT Pro TV have a course for all kinds of things. And even myself, I've used some of their courses to uh, gain more knowledge on some of the topics. All right, to the content here. The first thing I wanna mention is the real obvious. Windows and Linux are clearly two very different operating systems and also Windows being the more prevalent operating system on the desktop and many companies catering to having drivers written for Windows means you have a wider variety of hardware compatibility. I have in my hand a Dell, I, XPS, I think it's a 75 something series, um, but it's not, sold with Linux on it. Dell has models that are sold with Linux that are very Linux compatible. This is not one of them. My friend wanted me to see if I could get Linux on it. I can definitely get it installed, but it doesn't work well. So first off, if you're gonna go Linux in, in specifically Pop! OS 1910, while I find the compatibility to be excellent, matter of fact, 1910 worked the best on that laptop, but some features like this has that new fancy OLED screen, the dimming wasn't supported, for example. So I'm aware that there are challenges if you decide to go Linux instead of Windows, uh, finding hardware compatibility is one of them. Pop! OS versus Ubuntu, in my opinion, I have had better luck with it because they bake in different drivers, they bake in some enhancements uh, for different laptops or different pieces of hardware, such as even desktops, uh, that work a little better, but that particular laptop is not fully supported. And it's also an i9 and really fancy and about $3,000. It's cool, I wish it did work, but it does not. He's gonna put Windows back on it. Back to what am I running? So I am running my Lenovo L480. I've done a review on this particular computer and I love Pop! OS on it. I did have problems running other distributions on it because some of them, well, they had some issues with this uh, particular laptop and some of the ACPI functions. Pop! OS, on the other hand, like I said, it's one of the reasons I like it. Ubuntu runs perfectly fine on this one as well, uh, the 1910, but so does Pop! OS. Now in that regard, System76 are not only the producers of Pop! OS, they are also a company that produces laptops that are gonna be fully compatible as well as desktops uh, that absolutely out of the box, you know they're gonna work with every feature. Because one of the questions that comes up is, well, if I load Linux, when I lose all the battery life and things like that? Not necessarily. If the system is fully supported, then you can still get excellent battery life. And I've not done uh, 
A to B tests on every single laptop, but I do know this has excellent bat battery life on my Lenovo. These ones that they sell over at System 76 are gonna have good battery life. As long as all the ACPI functions are supported and when I close the lid, it goes to sleep and things like that work perfectly fine on here. Once you get over the hardware, and well, this is particularly, we'll show you this is running on, we'll do the about. So we're right on top of this. This is Pop OS 1910 and Core i5 A250U with just the standard Intel uh, 620 graphics. So nothing particularly high end right here. So, you know, you can at least base it like that for performance. The menus open fast, the things slide out nice and smooth. There's no real problems with it. Now, obviously the first thing you're gonna notice, uh, Pop OS versus Ubuntu, they both use GNOME, Pop OS has customized GNOME a lot. This is one of those things when you're switching from Windows, you're used to the Windows UI, and the only time there's a change to it is when you go from Windows 95 to 98, all the way to XP to 7 to, you know, oh man, Vista and now Windows 10. Yes, you've seen UI changes in there. Linux is different because you can have a Linux system, as in the kernel is Linux, but the UI changes based on what UIs get loaded. This is the one I prefer is GNOME. There are ones that look more Windows-like with a start button at the bottom. I find them to be very kind of clunky. Even Microsoft with Windows 10 uses a more, to me, a modern search and launch function because if I know what I'm gonna open, it's easier to open. Now, one thing I'm gonna point out here, you notice at the bottom, the Alt and Tab showed up. This is a little tool I have loaded and I know someone will ask about it. It's called Screen Key. And if you do Screen P dash, well, the command that you see here uh, and another tool called Slop that's loaded, this allows me to run Screen Key on this and then show you what keys I'm pressing to make things happen. So super key up and down, switching between virtual desktops. And I figured this would be easy for our little guide here to show you some of the differences, Windows versus this and how you navigate the UI. Now. The first thing is I'm pressing the super key. When I do the expanded out menu like this, the only time it doesn't show the super key, but super key is what does that, or Windows key if you're on a standard Windows computer. And so we're gonna kind of start there. So how do we get this thing connected? Well, most Linux distributions and GNOME-based ones, and specifically Pop! OS one we're talking about here, your connectivity is over here. So if you wanna to switch to networks, yes, Notice Me Senpai is the uh, long running joke name for the network that I'm connected to um, at our office here. But if we hit select network, we can choose other ones like LTS, IoT, and our neighbors. We can jump on their Wi-Fi as well if we want. <laughs> um, we've tried talking about this open neck gear. They don't, they don't care. Um, Let's you switch to it. So your standard get connected on Wi-Fi, pretty straightforward and simple. And the network settings, if you needed to go further in here, uh, you can go in here, you can go to the Wi-Fi settings. It pulls up the settings menu and you're able to dive in here a little bit deeper. There's also a standard network settings where if the wired was plugged in, it would be right here. And you can do all your standard configuration. So not too hard to do, but this is where things get a little different. This is the launcher. Now this is something we see in Windows 10 where I can type settings or I can type in network. Now the difference between, I gotta spell network right, it's still case sensitive, E-T-W-O-R-K. I can go to the settings here or here. Now, like I said, very Windows-like, which you may have noticed, it's instant, it comes up. I've always been pained by Windows 10, just even on a fast computer, it search function doesn't always nail it. Uh, they seem to be getting better at it, but They've been this way for a while on Linux, so this is something that's been around for a while, being able to launch things this way. And let's say I want to open up GIMP, which is the photo editing program I use. I can launch it just by doing that. Now, window navigation, you're like, okay, I made it full screen. How do I switch to other applications? Well, just like Windows, Alt-Tab works perfectly fine, but people then want to minimize it. Well, there's a way to do that, and it's super key H for hide, and there is an entire list of keyboard shortcuts. Now these are specific to Pop! OS. Some of these do work in Ubuntu as well, but they have been, there's a little bit more customization. What about those keyboard shortcuts? Well, maybe you wanna edit them. Typing in K-E-Y-B, keyboard shortcuts, it also finds key base at the top, and they're all customizable if you want. And I believe there's more here than even you have inside of this little list. Yeah, I think that list is a little bigger for the keyboard shortcuts, but this is one of the reasons people like Linux so much is very customizable, including things like the keyboard shortcut options. Now, virtual desktops is something that I believe is slowly coming to Windows and it's not quite the same as the way it works in Linux, but we've had this in the Linux world for a long time and it's kind of a thing to grasp and listen to, to deal with. And 
it, it's like this, okay, what's this desktop versus this desktop? Now, I remember years ago, back in the early Windows days, there was an add-on that allowed this, so it was like really cool. I used to use it all the time. Its name eludes me, but I loved when I could start switching to it right natively within uh, Linux. I'm like, oh, great, this is, you know, and it's like, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, maybe longer, uh, when this feature started to become more popular. And it's implemented in different ways versus what type of system you're using. This is a GNOME-based system, so this is the GNOME implementation. Now, the way a virtual desktop works, I have this here. Now, let's launch something. Back to where's my start button. We can launch things by pressing the start key here. We can just find the applications that are here. This application's running, so it's got the little dot under it. This one's running. Let's open up our file manager here. So now when we open it again, the little dot under it means file manager's running. All right, so here's the file manager. Not too difficult. Looks like your standard Windows Explorer, but there's a few tricks up its sleeve. Let's open up the downloads. It's got tabbed based, so we can look at different things. Let's see, open this tab over here. And we can go from place to place. Now, because you do not run as a privileged user, some things are gonna kind of be off limits. Um, and you see this nice little home, select all, but if you wanted to get to this, just a quick, whoops, wrong key. That's the wake up key, um, but it's next to the other one anyways, uh, control key, but uh, control L is what we wanted to press. And then we can go to slash, which is essentially similar to C drive. When Because Linux uses mount points, uh, it's sometimes a little confusing, but you're only restricted really to read write access to your home slash your username. But yes, you can get to, so to speak, the root of it all, which may be uh, similar to the way C is on Windows. And it does let you navigate through there, but uh, it does by default kind of obscure it because you notice when there's not like a go up a level, but there is here. It always That's why it brings you back to home. That's what you have read write permission for. And you don't really need to do things outside. You keep everything in your home. That's kind of a general good rule for the way the file system works. Now, what about connecting to things like, oh, I don't know, a Windows share? How do you do that in Linux? That must be really confusing to do. Actually, it's uh, mounted right here. That's why we can see how you can unmount it with the little eject button. And we just hit the Control L again, and there it is. SMB 192.168.3.8. That's the share address. Please note the slashes, even if it's a Windows server, they'll go this way. And the first time you connect to one of these, it would do something. So actually, let's uh, unmount this one. And then we'll go control L, SMB, colon, slash, slash, 192.168.3.4, slash, I think it's studio is one of them. Oops, I spelled studio wrong. Uh, it doesn't matter, it'll give me an error. But now it wants to know what username you want to do to connect. So uh, registered user, Lawrence T, or just anonymous. We're going to hit anonymous. I'll get an error because that directory is wrong. Control L again, S-T-U-D-I-O. What I want to connect as anonymous, registered. You can also save the password, save forever, uh, put the domain in, etc., and away you go. So that's how you would connect. Now back to some of the navigation. We're going to go back up to this. What if I wanted to open up something here? We'll launch uh, from here just to show you that we can do this. We'll launch the calculator, but we want the calculator to be on the other screen. All right, I want that moved over here, so I can actually grab things when I use that super key and we'll drag it. Now the calculator's there. Let's open up our, oh, hit the super key again, open up LibreOffice Writer. What if I want this on another one? Well, it's the uh, same thing. We can just go and drag that and it creates another one. So now we actually have three virtual desktops. You notice how they're being created on the fly? It creates them on the fly on an as needed basis. Uh, so here's each one you're working on. And one of the use cases that I use this frequently for is when I'm monitoring something. I wanna work here, but monitor here. So I can just do this real quick. I can be working away, doing my thing, and over here maybe a message. And sometimes I'll move all my messaging applications like here, that way I can reply to messages have them in exactly the positions I want because I usually have more than one messaging thing open, have them scattered across the screen and away you go. Now, what about this minimize button? Yes, super key H will minimize things and you can just go back to those things. And by the way, when you switch them between desktops, you notice it switches to the desktop that it's on. But some of the other sticky sides like this work, sticky sides like this work, double clicking brings it back full screen. So you, you don't end up really, to me, I never used the super case to minimize, uh, but it's something you can do. And you do have the close window, which is hitting the super H. So actually let's uh, tab over to here. 
and then we'll hit super key. Was it W? Yeah. And you can close it. Of course, the X closes it as well. Now, one more thing I'll note about this is when you're in here and you say new window, let's go back over to just pull up YouTube or something. Now we have a new problem. We only see one Firefox, but there's two. So all I'm doing is you notice alt tab and then arrowing between them. So when you tab between them, you can group them. There's ways you can tweak this and turn the grouping on and off. I generally like it on, but it can be kind of handy for this. But then you can also say, take this and move it over to another desktop. So we'll hit the super key and we can drag this one over to this desktop and away you go. Now, something else you can do is super key when I'm selected on this window right here, super key shift up. See what happens now, I just moved it to this desktop with this on there. So now when you look, these are on these desktops together. Let's move this one to the bottom. So super key shift, down arrow. Now this is on the bottom one and we're just gonna do super key up arrow. This is in the middle one and this is at the top one. So you can see it's it, not too difficult, but once you get used to it, you can see this creates a really good workflow and being able to use it. It's not too hard to learn these, and I recommend things like even print these out, stick them on the wall next to you or something to kind of learn how they work. It's not that difficult to get in there, but people do suspect that it's kind of uh, this big daunting task to learn Linux because they're used to things being the way they are. Now, what if I wanted to add something here like calculator? Don't you launch it all the time? Or what about actually something I do launch all the time? And I just reloaded this laptop and I didn't pin anything to the side here. So I liked opening Shutter. Great tool uh, for doing screenshots. So Shutter is a great utility for this. And what we're going to do is once you open it, we can do all these options uh, that may, some of these have context menu or we add to favorites. Now what happens when I close it, I'll go ahead and do this. It's now there, but not launched. See how there's no little dot under it? Put this, hit it again. Now there's a dot under it. Not too difficult to get to. Now, well, the last things I'll kind of cover, and these are just some brief overview things. There's a lot of different deeper dives into here, but when you know the file system, like I said, things start at home so I can open up and create, et cetera. Much of these dialog boxes are gonna be familiar to users of other operating systems. So I'll close all that, but how did you get that software on it? How do you load things on this, Tom? That seems really confusing. Now, Pop does this by default, and I left it on here, they have the Pop Shop. The way Linux works is repositories. This is a absolutely wonderful way to do it. And think of it the same way. This, this concept's been around for a very long time in Linux and people think it's something new happening in the Android world or the iPhone world of having a store to get things in. It's not. So it's something that has been part of what we refer to as a repository is a uh, place where I can get things like games. And uh, let me find a game I'm looking for like Frozen Bubble. I'll say I wanted to install it. I would just go here, it's a small game. I hit install, that would require a super user privilege and it'll prompt me for my password, which I'm not gonna type because it'll show it on the screen. And uh, you can authenticate and log in. Simple as that, and now it would install that application on here. It does not have the same requirements like people think before that, oh my gosh, everything's going to be completely command line and confusing. Matter of fact, even things like Steam, so because Steam has Linux support, uh, here's Steam. You can install Steam on Pop! OS. They've done all the proper tweaks and included this in the repository. And this is where different Linux distributions have different methodologies because they've included a lot of different things in Pop! OS, including like a Steam library uh, already attached. These are things you could customize most any Linux distro to do, but Pop! OS has taken the time to do a lot of this for you. It makes it pretty handy and you can do things like install Steam. And the last thing I'll cover, because if you're like me, you have to use this in a business environment, not just at home, maybe you've got to print things. And that's a painful, terrible printing is awful, right? Okay, it's been better, uh, but we have some network printers here. And adding them is easy as just hitting add. It'll start finding printers on my network. Uh, and unlike Windows, where it just starts running around finding them for you, you actually do have to click on them and then I can click add. And it actually works with a pretty good variety of printers. Uh, these network ones we have right here, the two I usually use is this LaserJet 45, 4015, an older model, and a Canon MF2030. These are both just tied to our network. Uh, it does support a lot of different USB printers. There's a pretty big variety of drivers. It seems to lend its support better to a, a commercial one. And a lot of companies, uh, including like from Lexmark and uh, HP, do offer Linux drivers if they're needed. But I've often found the drivers that come with it is really good um, and well supported. Now, 
the display changes and things like that. If you're on a laptop, you don't usually change much, but if you're on a desktop, maybe you care about the resolution, but hopefully most people, if you're running modern hardware, it's 1920, 1080, but yeah, that is completely switchable. And, and I'll point out on that Dell that I tested because it has a 4K OLED screen, uh, scaling, I have it turned off on here, but yes, it is supported so you can do all the proper scaling and that actually worked perfectly fine in there. So when you're testing Linux with 4K screens, uh, it works quite well. Um, there's also little things you can tweak like appearance and search and how you want to attach online accounts. One of the nice things is, once again, comes down to all that com customizability. Uh, so these are the screens and if I clicked on it, do I want to set it as the background or the lock screen or set background and lock screen? That way when I bring it to the lock screen, it's going to have it on there. And for appearance, by default, there's only two in here. The Estes can be further customized and they've done a nice job on this in my opinion. So if I want to switch to the light theme, because maybe you like a light theme or maybe you want a dark theme, it's just one click away. These are natively built in. This is kind of a stock install. Now they've also done things like your default applications for things and uh, such are in here. So you can customize notifications, default applications, uh, things like that. It's pretty, uh, pretty nice setup for all this. That way you can have like, this is what launches for that. It does give you all that tweaking. And of course you can go further. Here's the power settings, which I can adjust the screen brightness, which by the way, the uh, media keys, uh, volume up and down, as you see I'm pressing, that works fine. So does screen brightness. Of course, it's not going to do anything for you guys because you're on a mirrored setup here. So all those standard functions and media keys, I frequently find when I load Linux on laptops and desktops, this works perfectly fine as well. But, so you don't have to be quite as scared as Linux. There is obviously some changes. Linux isn't Windows, so there is some concepts you have to learn. But from a navigation standpoint, although it may look a little different, once you get used to this workflow, I really find it to be... Uh, very easy compared to Windows. Windows always feels very clunky to me when I'm trying to do things and manipulate and move files. This tabbed view, the uh, views of the file manager being able to do that, plus the power of the command line, which Windows finally, you know, because you can load bash on the command line of Windows, that's something I really like. And uh, many people I know and many of my developer friends have, gone, yeah, we've loaded the whole, you know, bash shell. It's handy having all that uh, bash scripting and abilities that you get with a Linux core inside of Windows. Definitely an improvement, but I kind of like running it natively on Windows or on Linux instead of Windows, so I'm doing it all with real. So I'll leave links to Pop! OS, not that it's hard to find, um, and you can read more about it. You can go through some of my other Linux tutorials where I talk about different things in here, but it is a great thing uh, for me. I've always run it as my daily driver for a number of years, and these latest versions have been so much smoother, especially this latest version of Pop! OS. Um, it's fast. It's just smooth as butter on this. It's even smooth on my older laptop. I didn't really have any problems with it either. I upgraded the older ones as well. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.